Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to do a Unify Network 2022 build out. I do these about once a year and they've added quite a lot since the last one. This video is going to be pretty long, so I will have timestamps to certain sections down below. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, Unify Network Consulting, Unify Protect, Unify Talk, Unify Access, or UID, visit MacTelecomNetworks.com. You'd find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, I do have affiliate links in the description below. So first off, this is the network that I currently have, and I'm going to be resetting all of this network so that we could do this video. I do have a couple switches daisy chained, and we really shouldn't do that. I'm waiting on some copper SFPs. All my switches really should be plugging into this USW Pro aggregation switch. But first, we're going to take the camera downstairs, and I'm going to talk about what I use in my rack and why I use it. And this could apply to home or business. So let's get downstairs and look at the rack. Okay, and this is my network rack, which has gotten a bit messier because I've been adding some things for testing. I am going to be redoing this once some things come out of early access. But let's start at the top. This first patch panel, there's nothing connected to it. But the bottom one, we do have connections going into it. And the reason why we use a patch panel is because we want to terminate all the cables that are running through our business or through our house in one common place. So these cables that are attached to these keystone jacks would be running into our wall into a faceplate or maybe behind some servers. The next device is the 24 port enterprise PoE switch and the reason I have this switch is because it could do power over ethernet to give my access points and my cameras power as well as it does 2.5 gigabit ethernet connections on 12 of the ports. I have a U6 enterprise which has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface so this switch really comes in handy. On the sides, we have them all connected with DAC cables going down to our USW aggregation switch, which the DAC cables do 10 gigabits per second. Now that brings us to the USW Pro aggregation switch. So this switch is used as my distribution switch. We really should have every single other switch plugging into this. As I said earlier, I don't have all the copper SFPs as I'm waiting for them. This switch has 28 10 gigabit ethernet interfaces and then it has four 25 gigabit ethernet interfaces on the end. Below that we have my firewall and I'm using the UDM SE. So this hosts our network controller, Unify Protect, Unify Access, Unify Talk, and UID. If we look here right at this cable, this is port nine and that's my WAN one. I do have a WAN two and that will be for load balancing, which we will take a look at. Now this next switch I don't really need, but I got it just to do a review on and it's the mission critical switch. One good thing about this switch is it has PoE++, which I could power my USW flex switches for my cameras. Below that we have the PVU Professional, which I'm waiting for a firmware update so it gives us the virtual router redundancy so we could add two UDM Pros or two UDM SEs into our topology. And then I have a Synology DS1621XS Plus and this is used for my computer backups. We have an RPS, which is a redundant power supply, and then we have my UNBR Pro, which is used for cameras. Now I'm going to reset all of this Ubiquiti gear, and then we're going to start with the network configurations. Now I'm back at the computer, and we need to do the initial setup of the UDM SE. You can see currently that I can't reach out to Google, and the default IP address for the UDM Pro or the SE is 192.168.1.1, so I'll type that in. Now we can see it's showing this loading page for the UDM SE. And it's saying that Unify is committed to protecting our privacy and we'll say set up UDM SE. The first step is to name our console. I'm going to call it Mac Telecom SE. And then we need to agree to the terms in the end user license and press next. Now we need to sign in with our single sign on account, or you could skip this and do a local account. I'm going to put in my single sign on information and then press next. Now my UDM SE ran a speed test and it's showing us our results and we'll press next. This next step is something new that I haven't seen before and it's saying default IP change. We have detected an already configured network subnet mask or it says use previous subnet mask. We'll do that for now. If we need to change it, we will. We're now at the dashboard for my UDM SE and we need to put in our username and password and I have two factor authentication turned on and I will show you that when we get to the security portion of this video. Now in the dashboard of the UDM SE, we're under our applications. We could see that our network needs an update, protect access talk and UID. I'm gonna update the network. The protect we won't be using as I use my UMVR Pro to host the protect controller, but we will be using Unify Access, Unify Talk and UID. For this video, we're just focusing on the Unify network. And we're also gonna set up UID one-click Wi-Fi, one-click VPN, 
because I think it's a great function for businesses. While the applications are updating, let's take a look at this dashboard and what it has to offer. So we could see underneath we have the Unify OS and we could see which version we're at, which we're at 2.5.11, which is the latest stable update. We could see our release channel. If we want to go into the beta or the early access release channel, we could switch that here. I always have my auto updates turned off, but if you're not coming into your controller at least once a month, I would leave those on. Now, if we go to devices, we could see a few devices that are showing offline. That's because we haven't adopted anything into our controller yet. Once we have our devices in our controller, they would all show up under this list. We could also take a look at our admins, which is just my account right now, and we could add other admins. Under our console settings, this is where we could give our console a name and we could do system config backup. So this will push the backup to the cloud, which is at account.ui.com. So if your UDM Pro or your UDM SE ever failed, you could just get a new one, put it in the rack, sign into your single sign-on, and then load the backup and all your config will go into it. We could also set up our location and time zone. We could do advanced, so remote access. And if we need to SSH into our UDM SE, we would have to click this and then set a password. We have some console controls where you could restart, turn off, factory reset, download a support file, or we could transfer this ownership. So when I'm setting up customers, I have my account as the owner, but when I hand it over to them, I transfer the ownership. Next, we have push notification settings, and you can see that there's a whole bunch of different things. So we could see the hard drive fails, we could see console updates, we have some admin activities, and then we have our backups. So we could either have it push notify us, or we could have it send an email. We have our map for geolocation, I'm not gonna show that, and then we have a system log. So this system log is gonna show us a couple things. We could see that talk was updated, and we could view the improvements. We could see that UID is ready to update as well, and we could see the admin activity. Under storage, it's gonna show us if we have a hard drive in the UDM Pro or the UDM SE, which right now I just have a four terabyte drive. And then under about this console, it's gonna show us the model. It will show us our WAN IP and the gateway. It will show if our system is up to date, and it will also show us things like our memory and our CPU load. Now all of our applications that we'll be using are up to date. The next step is to get all of our devices adopted into our network controller. So we'll click on the network controller, and this is our main dashboard for our network controller. It's gonna show us some traffic overview, client information, as well as our WAN 1 and our WAN 2, but this won't show too much yet as it's factory restarted. So on the left-hand pane, we could see Unified Devices. From the Unified Devices, we could see my Mac Telecom SE and then a whole list of these devices that need to be adopted. All we need to do is click to adopt and then press Adopt Device and they'll start going into our network controller. Once this is done, if they need firmware updates, it will show and we'll update those. So now all of our devices have adopted into our network controller. So we could create new networks and Wi-Fi networks, and these will push the configuration to the devices that are in this list. We could see that my cameras are on the 10 network, which they shouldn't be. We're gonna have to create a network for the cameras by itself. And this is the list of networks that we're gonna create. So we have our default network on 192.168.10.1 slash 24. We have IoT, cameras, guest, and staff. So we're gonna create all of these networks as well as the associated Wi-Fi networks for them. Besides default, we're not gonna have a Wi-Fi network for that. So to start creating our networks, we need to go to the settings wheel on the left-hand side. Here we could see Wi-Fi networks, we could see networks, internet, teleport, and VPN, traffic management, firewall and security, profiles, and systems. The one we want is under networks. And the first network I'm gonna create is the IoT network. And right here, we can see that it's going to be going through my router of my Mac Telecom SE. I do have a couple layer three switches that we could do the routing through, but I like to keep it on my SE for now as the layer three switching still isn't working that well. Under gateway and IP subnet, I always uncheck auto scale network. And for this network, we're going to be having it on the 192. 168.20.1 network. This will automatically update our DHCP range so it starts at dot six and goes to 254. Under advanced configuration, I put mine to manual and then the VLAN ID I always match with my third octet, so this will be 20. For this network type, it will just be standard and then the content filtering, I'm just gonna leave that off and we'll press add network. Now we'd need to add my camera network, so we'll name it camera. It's gonna go through my Mac Telecom SE, turn off auto scale, and we'll put it on 192.168.30.1. We'll go under manual, we'll put the VLAN ID as 30, and then we'll apply the network. 
The next network we're going to do is our guest network. We're going to turn off the auto scale. We'll put them on 192.168.40.1. And then under manual, we'll give them the VLAN ID of 40. And this time for the network type, we'll put them as a guest network. So putting them as a guest network, this will automatically create firewall rules for us. So they could only go out to the internet. They can't see any other networks that we've created. I'm not going to add a content filter to this either. And we'll press add network. And the last network we're going to create is our staff network. We're going to uncheck auto scale and it will be 192.168.50.1. We'll go to manual, put a VLAN ID of 50 and then add the network. So now that our networks are created, we need to create our Wi-Fi networks. And we could do that by clicking on Wi-Fi and then adding a network. So the first one I'll put in is called staff. We'll give it a password for this. I'm just going to do test one, two, three, four, but you will want to make it a stronger password. And then under network, this is where we select our VLAN. So if we click the drop down arrow, we could see all of those different networks that we created and we could see our staff network. I'm going to have it broadcasting over all my APs because I only have two, but you could create a group to specify which access points you want this SSID to go over. And then underneath here, we're just going to leave it on the advanced configuration under the auto and press add Wi-Fi network. I'll create one more Wi-Fi network because the process is the same for every other one. So we'll create and I'll call this one guest. We'll give it a password of test one, two, three, four, and then we'll select the network of guest. Now for the guest network, we're going to go to the advanced configuration and then go to manual. And the reason I'm doing this, I want to put a bandwidth profile on this guest network so that they could only get 10 down and 10 up. So we're going to create a new bandwidth profile and I'm going to call this one guest and we'll give them 10 down and then we'll give them 10 up and we'll apply the changes. Now going back to the Wi-Fi network, we could see under the bandwidth profile that we have that guest profile created and we're going to add it to the Wi-Fi network. This will make it so that our guests could only get 10 down and 10 up. Now our Wi-Fi networks are created, but we need to move over some hardwired connections to the correct VLAN. So I'll show you how we do that. On my USW24 PoE, I know I have some cameras on it, so I'm going to click on that switch, and then we're going to go over to ports. From ports, we're going to go to port management. One really nice update that Ubiquiti provided us with is the ability to see the icons of what's connected. So we can see on port 1 that I have a G4 Pro, port 2 is my U6 Enterprise, and so on and so forth. So to change the network that the cameras are on, I will click on port 1, I'll click on port 3, that's a G3 Flex, We'll click on port six, port 10, and that's it for this switch. And then below we could see all the ports are selected and then our port profile. So by default, Ubiquiti sets it to the all profile, which means it's a trunk and all VLANs could go through it. We need to set this to our camera network. So if we scroll down, we could see cameras and then we could apply the changes. To make the cameras get an IP quicker, I'll click on the port and then we'll port power cycle. We'll press confirm and this will power cycle the PoE on that port, the camera will go down and then come back up. We also need to make sure that my UMVR Pro is in that camera network because when we put in firewall rules, it would be blocked if it wasn't in the same network. So this is my UMVR Pro. This is on my aggregation switch. We'll click on the port and then we'll just put it into the camera network and all my cameras should be able to reach it. Now we have the basic setup for our Unify network. We've created Wi-Fi networks. We know how to put VLANs on hard cabled ports and we have all of our cameras moved over. The next section will focus more on security and firewall rules. The first thing that you should do for security within your UDM Pro or your UDM SE is to enable two-factor authentication. And how we do that, we go to account.ui.com. We would then sign in with our single sign-on account and then go to My Security. Under My Security, we could see a few things. Here we could see multi-factor authentication. I'm currently using UI Verify, but you could add new methods. A couple of the methods that we have is app authentication. So we could use something like Google Authenticator or Authy. We have email authentication or SMS. I prefer UI Verify out of all of them. If you were to select app authentication, we would click on here, a QR code would come up. And then with Google Authenticator or Authy, we would scan that QR code. Then it would give us our six digit key. Now that we have two factor authentication enabled, we need to make some firewall rules. How Ubiquity works, by default, when we create networks, we could get everywhere. There's no blocking rules in place. I'm currently on the IoT network. We could go IP config and see that I'm on 192.168.20.241. If we look at one of the devices on the side, we could see my 24 PoE at 10.58. We shouldn't be able to ping this. 
but we can. So 192.168.10.58. And you can see that those pings are going through. So we need to make sure that the IoT network and every other network is blocked out by blocking inner VLAN routing. So to get to our firewall rules, we need to go to settings. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create a port or an IP group. And we can find that under profiles and we could create a new group. This new group name is RFC 1918. And what this is, it's all the private IP addresses in IP version 4. So 192.168.0.0 slash 16 172.16.0.0 slash 12 and 10.0.0.0 slash 8 and then we'll add those in now the ip group is created we need to go over to firewall and security we're going to click on create new rule and then under the type it's going to be lan in so lan in is everything except our gateway ip so the dot ones for my instance the description i'm going to say allow default to all vlans so that my default network hosts all of my unified gear Below, we're going to have the action of accept. The source is going to be a network of default, and the destination is going to be that port slash IP group, and that will be that RFC 1918. So the default network could get to every single private IPv4 address. Now with just one rule, we could block out inner VLAN routing. So we're going to create a new rule, and this rule will be done under the LAN in as well, and I'll call it block inner VLAN routing. The action is going to be to drop this time, and the source is going to be a port IP group of the RFC 1918, and so is the destination. So that's going to block private IPs to private IPs. Now that we have the inner VLAN routing rule created, we shouldn't be able to ping that switch. So I'll go 192.168.10.58, and you can see that it is blocking that rule, but we could still hit the gateway. So if I go 192.168.10.1, we could hit that. We could also hit 20.1. And we could hit 30.1. So any gateway that we've created, we're going to be able to hit those. And we need to block those out because we don't want anybody getting to our firewall. So I'm just going to show you how to do this on one network, but it would apply to every other network besides our default. So we're going to go down to profiles. And then we're going to go to port and IP group, and we're going to create a new group. This first group name, we'll just do the IoT network. So I'll call it block IoT to gateways it's going to be an ipv4 address slash subnet and if i bring this screenshot up we'll see our subnets so we don't want to put our iot network in this group but we need to put in the camera the default the guest and the staff so the camera gateway would be 192.168.30.1 the default network is 192.168.10.1 the guest network is 40 and the staff network is 50 we're going to add that and then we're going to apply the changes. I'm going to go to port and IP group again and I'm going to create one just called IoT Gateway. And we'll put in the IoT Gateway IP address, so 192.168.20.1. We also need to create a port group for HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH. So the first port will be port 80, then 443, and then 22. Now that we have those groups created, we need to go back to firewall and security and then create a new rule. This time under the type, we're going to be using the LAN local, which is for our gateways. And I'll call it block IoT to gateways. The action is going to be to drop. The source is going to be a network of our IoT network. The destination is going to be a port and IP group of our block IOT to gateways and then press apply. Now let's try to ping our camera gateway. So ping 192.168.30.1. And we could see that we're not able to get to it. We wouldn't be able to get to the default network either, but we could still get to our own. And the reason for that, we can't block our own gateway. If we did, we wouldn't be able to go to the internet. So we need to block out HTTP, HTTPS and SSH towards the IP address of 192.168.20.1. So going back under firewall and security, we're gonna create a new rule. We'll go this time to LAN local, and I'll just call it block IoT to UDM interface. The action is gonna to be to drop, the source network is gonna be an IoT network, and the destination will be a port IP group. This time it will just be the IoT gateway, which we have that 192.168.2.1, and then we'll have the port group of HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH, and we'll apply the changes. Still, if we do a ping towards that, we're gonna be able to get through because we need access to the internet. 
But if I open up a web browser and go to 192.168.20.1, it won't let us to the web interface of our UDM SE. And you could see here that it's just timing out. Now let's say we want our camera network to be able to hit our NAS. Well, we can't currently because it's on 192.168.10.220, but we could add a rule in our firewall rules to accept that. So we'll go to firewall and security, and then we'll create a new rule. This is going to be under the type of LAN in, and we'll just say allow cam to NAS. The action is going to be to accept, and then the source will be a network of our cameras. And the destination, I'm just going to give it an IP address of 192.168.10.220, which is my NAS, and then we'll press apply changes. We still won't be able to reach our NAS on the camera network because this rule is under the block inner VLAN routing. So to switch that, we just need to drag and drop, and then we'll be able to get to our NAS. So if I bring up a command prompt, we'll be able to ping 192.168.10.220. Lots of people have asked about casting between networks and we need to make sure that we have MDNS on which is on by default now, but there are a few other things. Really we should be having our phones and our Chromecast as well as our Alexas and all of that on our IoT network, but if you're not going to, I'll show you how we could cast to them. So if we go back to firewall and security, we create a new rule. This is going to be a rule for LAN in, it will be allow establish and related. Typically, I always put this in, but I did forget to do it before we started. So we're going to accept. And then if we scroll down and go manual, we could do match establish and match related. Now I have two Google devices that I cast my music to. So I could go to profiles, scroll down, and we could create a new group. I'll call this Google Music. These are just my Nest Minis, and then I'll put in the IP addresses of them. So 192.168.20.108. And then I'll put in 192.168.20.117. We'll apply the changes, and then I'm going to go back to firewall and security. Now let's say again we want our camera network for some reason to get to our Google Music. We need to create a new rule, and this time it will again be under LAN in, and I'll call it cam to music. We're going to accept that the network is going to be our camera network, and then our destination will be that new group that I created of Google Music, and we'll press apply changes. Now going under the LAN section, we need to drag and drop cam to music above the block inner VLAN routing. Now this is gonna allow me to cast from the camera network to my Google minis. There's so many different ways to do firewall rules that you may have a different way to do these things and that could be correct as well. Now we're quickly gonna to touch on threat management. I'm not gonna to go too in depth with it as in a new update coming in the next weeks or months, it's gonna be a lot better. But at the top, we could restrict countries if we'd like, we could block countries completely out. All we would need to do is select the country. So if we wanted to block Canada out, we just click it and then press apply changes. You could add whichever countries you want to block out. And then under our threat management, we have off, detect only, and detect and block. I personally put mine on detect and block. I'd rather it being blocked and if it was a good connection coming in, I put it on my allow list. And I always put on my system sensitivity up to high and apply the changes. Now to be able to see if any threats are coming in, you should get a notification, but if you don't, you could always look on the left-hand side where it says system log. Under the system log, it's gonna show us the admins that have accessed our consoles, but then we have this threats. And under threats, if you do have any, it will show up here and you could assess it. Now let's take a look at something that's new only to the UDM SE right now, but it will be added to the UDM Pro eventually, and hopefully it's sooner than later but we have this traffic management and we could create a new rule. Say we didn't want our staff network to look at social media during business hours, so we could block that out. We could go to action a block, we could do it for applications, and then we could select social media. So Facebook, Instagram, we could do WeChat, we could do WhatsApp, Snapchat, so on and so forth. And then we could select our target. So our target could either be a full subnet, which I'll do it on my staff, or it could be per device. Now under this, we could do a schedule. So we could have it always every day, every week, one time only, or we could do custom. So I'm gonna do custom and we'll select Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We'll leave Saturday and Sunday open and we'll do it between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Now that we've selected our time, we could give it a name. We'll say block staff to social media. And then we could add the rule. From here, they won't be able to get to those applications that we've added. One other thing we're going to look at before we move to the UID portion of this is how to do load balancing. And again, load balancing is only available on our UDM SE depending when you're watching this video. 
So to do load balancing, we need to go up to our internet. I have two different internet connections coming into my UDMSE, one on port nine and one on port 10. You could make port eight an ISP connection if you'd wanted, but you could only run two at a time. We can't have three WANs connected to this. Down below, we have our load balancing. We have failover only or distributed, and we could do this at whatever we want, 99 or a 50-50 balance, or you could scroll down you need press apply and then it would start working now we're quickly going to go over uid and uid one click wi-fi and one click vpn this is more geared towards businesses but you need to apply for a uid workspace and how you do that you go to ui.com slash uid if you scroll down on the web page you can see here apply for uid invite and once you have your workspace you could start setting it up going back to my udm se we could see i have uid and we need to set it up so i'll click set up it says activate uid we have one click wi-fi one click vpn uid door access and then we have ldap integration i'm going to agree to the terms and then we're going to press activate uid i already have a workspace so i don't need to create one this is just a warning about your doors and the migration process that it will take and step one is to enter our workspace domain. So I'm going to put my workspace domain in and then we're going to press continue. On step two, it's asking us to enter the UID agent token and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to go to my UID workspace and from the UID workspace, I'm going to click on settings. Under settings, we could see unify OS consoles. And then at the top, we could see UID agent token. We need to create a new token. I'm going to call this UDM SE. It will never expire and then we'll create the token. We need to copy this token and then paste it and press continue. Step three, we need to add the device to a site, which I have Mac Telecom Networks already created, and we'll press continue. Now it's asking if we want to import our Unify OS users, which I'm going to as it's just me on there right now, and we'll press continue. On step five, it's going to ask us what services we want to activate. We're just going to activate one-click Wi-Fi and one-click VPN and deselect the bottom two and press continue. Now I'm in my UID workspace. We can see the one-click Wi-Fi is set up, but the VPN isn't. The reason the one-click Wi-Fi is set up is because if we go to our settings wheel and then I click on Wi-Fi, I have this to auto set up Wi-Fi on Unify OS consoles once it's brought into the workspace. If we look back at my UDMSE, it automatically created two different Wi-Fi networks. We could see UID and then UID IoT, and they're both running over the default network, which we won't really want. So I'm going to go back to UID. We'll click on the one-click Wi-Fi. And then on the side, we're going to click on host device. From this host device, it's going to tell us the device. It will tell us if it's enabled or disabled, the model number and the UID agent, as well as the IP address. I'm going to click on that. And then we can see UID Wi-Fi. If we want to change the UID Wi-Fi SSID, we need to go back into our settings wheel and then go to the Wi-Fi section. But under here, we could switch the network that it's running on. If we click the drop-down menu, we could say that we want it on IoT, cameras, staff, or guests. We could also tell it which Wi-Fi band to work on, 5, 2.4, or both of them. We could also enable or disable the IoT Wi-Fi as well as the guest. Now, before we look at the UID application on my iPhone, let's configure the one-click VPN. And then it's saying set up a one-click VPN. We'll hit the setup button in the right corner. Set up a one-click VPN. The VPN name will be Mac Telecom Networks VPN, We'll have it going over my Mac Telecom SE and it will be running OpenVPN. We can see the VPN server, which is my public IP, the protocol that it's using, and then the port number. We could also show advanced settings. Under the advanced settings, this is where we could tell it what subnet to be, or it will just create its own. I'm going to put it on 192.168.62.1/24. We'll leave the DNS optional and then we'll press next. Now it's saying, do you want to secure your VPN connection? This is with Adaptive VPN, which I just did a video on. So if you want to check that out, I'll put it in the description below. If you don't have your ISP gear in bridge mode, you'll have to port forward the port for the open VPN towards your UDM Pro or UDM SE for this to be able to work. Now looking under our users, I already have two users. We have one that's Mac Telecom test, which we will use to test this configuration out. If you want to add a new user, click on the top and then we could add a new user or we could import them from G Suite or Office 365. Once the user has been added, we need to give them assignments. So I'm going to click on this Mac Telecom test and then we could see assignments. We could assign them to whatever Wi-Fi we'd like. So we'll just do it the Mac Telecom networks and then we could do it to the VPN as well. If we had doors set up, we would be able to give them NFC cards or an eight digit character to get in and then we'll press save. Now I'm on my iPhone in the UID app and we could see that I have the Wi-Fi here and we have my VPN. I'm not gonna connect to the Wi-Fi, but I will connect to the VPN. So I'll click on the VPN. 
and you can see that it's connected. That's how easy it is to be able to do a VPN with UID, but we still need to make some firewall rules. So if I was trying to ping one of my Ubiquiti devices, it would be able to go through and I'll show you that. So I have my Unify RPS on 192.168.10.57 and we can press go and it's gonna ping across. But we probably don't want all of our VPN users to be able to reach our gear. So let's make some firewall rules just to allow this VPN to get to my Synology NAS. Going back to my UDMSE, I clicked on profiles and we're gonna create a new group. Within this group, I'll put the UID VPN subnet, which is 192.168.62.0 slash 24, and then we'll apply the changes. Now I'm gonna create another group with all my other subnets. So I'll say all networks, and then we'll put in the IP address subnets of 192.168.10.0 slash 24. We'll also do 192.168.20.0 slash 24 and then 192.168.50.0 slash 24. Now going to our firewall and security, we're gonna have to put in a new rule. So we'll create a new rule, and this time it's gonna be a type of LAN out. And we're gonna say block UID VPN to networks. I'm gonna drop the traffic. The port or the source is gonna be a port group of our UID VPN. The destination is gonna be a port IP group of our all networks and then we'll press apply changes. Now going back to my phone that's connected to the VPN, I'm gonna press ping and we shouldn't be able to get to 10.57. And you can see there that the requests are timing out, but now we need to put an allow rule in to allow this VPN to get to our NAS. So we'll go back to firewall and security and we'll create a new rule. Under this new rule, it will be in LAN out and we'll say UID VPN to NAS. We'll accept the traffic the port IP group is going to be our UID VPN. And then under our destination, we'll put an IP address and the IP address will be of my Synology NAS. Now we need to put that allow rule above the block rule. So we could see rule 2001 is UID VPN to NAS is under the block rule. So I'll drag and drop it above it. And we should now be able to reach the NAS from our VPN. Going back to my phone, I'll try pinging 192.168.10.220. And you could see that those ping replies are going through. So that was a whole lot to go over, but this is a perfect setup for your home or small business. There are different firewall rules that you could do, which will be different for everybody depending on the scenario. I really think UID has a lot to offer to small to mid-sized businesses. Everything that I showed in this video on UID would be for the basic tier. You could have up to 50 users in that tier, as well as three doors. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.